Hey, how's it going? This is Taurus at Visual Spicer, and in this video, what I wanted to do is uh, basically give you a walkthrough of how I created this simple little uh, printable progress tracker that I created for my new uh, Figma Friday video series on YouTube. Uh, and for this, um, I'm basically kind of going by uh, what I've been doing for one of my uh, side hustles called the training journey where I create uh, all of these different progress trackers and training guides um, that I offer online and I created all of these uh, using Figma and if we look at uh, my working file for that specifically what this tracker is inspired by is uh, one of these running plans where I create um, buckets for the, the days um, that you're following and then you just sort of check each one off uh, and that allows you to uh, keep track of your progress so I'm doing the same thing for uh, my goal is to create 30 Figma Friday videos for 2021 um, so that's what I created here and that's what we're gonna dive into and create right now together so let's get into it um, so to get started I created this in a letter size uh, sheet of paper. So with my frame tool, I'll select paper and hit letter. Figma will create a letter size frame. I'll drop in a text block here. 30 weeks of uh, just making sure that my cap caps lock isn't on uh, so let's see why are we getting all caps because of this letter case a setting here pin that to top and center and then we'll use Roboto uh, let's use bold for that uh, let's see I used a 30 point font so 30 that sounds good and set the uh, letter spacing to 0 Okay, center that horizontally. Uh, I'll rename the letter to progress tracker. Uh, okay, so next what I'm going to do is using smart guides, uh, I'm going to, or actually lay, layout grid, I'm going to define these outer margins. Uh, so I'll select my frame, add a let, layout grid, and then change it from grid to columns and then I would like that opacity to be 50 uh, this is going to be just a single column margins I think I used 40 we'll adjust that in a moment and then zero for gutter so that way I get these guidelines on the sides uh, it looks like margins were 50 okay so I got the side margins I'll select that paste it in, change this one to rows so that way I have one column going horizontally, one column going vertically and now uh, if I was to take this frame with layout grid turned on anytime, if I resize it in any way it, Figma maintains these uh, visible margins which I can turn on and off to use as my guideline so next um, let's create a new frame inside of here uh, that's going to hold all of the content with all of these buckets uh, and then for this one I'm going to uh, remove the color or hide the color fill and let's see I need a frame. Okay, so frame. That was drawing a rectangle actually. I needed a frame. So frame, uh, again, I'm going to add a layout grid. Uh, and then I'm going to lay out the spacing for all of these buckets here. Uh, so we want to go start with columns to five. So five columns. Uh, we'll do let's see how much spacing I had between those about 30 pixels so I'll select that uh, my gutter will be 
30 pixels right there. Get that to about that height. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate this layout grid, turn it to rows, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Okay. Uh, with the same 30 pixel gutter. Uh, so what this does is it shows me uh, that e each one of these squares I'm going to place in one of these uh, weekly buckets. Uh, so now I'm going to create a component that I have here with instances of that uh, all through here to indicate uh, the numbers of weeks. So I'll create a, uh, a new frame in here. Uh, let's give that just a temporary fill so I can see it and I want to keep that as a square right there okay so that can hide the color within that so this is going to act as um, my container here and I'll give that a, a stroke, two pixels. And it looks like I did uh, rounded corners. Radius was 14 pixels. So I'll do that here. Uh, right here, 14 pixels. And then background was white. Uh, I'll drop my little text block in here. And we'll say we'll use the worst case scenario for the text. So I'll type in 30, uh, center that horizontally and vertically within um, this bucket, and then constrain it to center, vertical, and horizontal. Okay. And then also what I did, if I turn off my uh, grids, also what I did is I gave it this uh, just little drop shadow effect to kind of pop that bucket forward. So I'll, I'll select this frame again, give it an effect, drop shadow. Uh, I guess that frame needs a fill so we're not seeing the shadow on the inside. So I will make that white right there. And then for the drop shadow, we'll set blur to zero so it has that crisp edge. and what I'm going to do is, uh, we'll say, let's use maybe this gray at 100% opacity, and then the offset I can fine tune later, but I'll set it to 4 and maybe 6 for now, right here. Okay, so now I have my uh, weekly bucket here. So what I'll do is turn that into, uh, first I'll name it week bucket and then I'll turn that into a component and stick it out of my frame right here so this indicates that it's a master component and now what I'll do is I'll start dropping instances of this guy to this frame so this is now a component instance which is linking to this master I'll show you why that's important here in a little bit and then I'll continue creating instances of that. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Okay, I'll select these and then space them out uh, horizontally. Control Alt Shift H is the keyboard shortcut. So with that row selected, I'll copy all of it down to here. Duplicate, 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 duplicate again. And then if we turn off our layout grids so now I have all of these in a frame so actually at this point since I have my layout uh, I can actually eliminate this frame so I'll do that because I don't really need it now I have all of my weekly buckets uh, laid out and spaced out correctly so what I'll do here uh, is through overrides uh, I'll change these numbers to one Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, 
I'll pause the recording really quick because this is kind of repetitive work. Okay, so now uh, I've gone through and via overrides updated all of the numbers inside of the bucket to be 1 through 30. And uh, just to demonstrate why it's important to have these uh, or why I like to have each one of these as uh, component instances because if I ever decided to change anything in this one master component, say the uh, font styling for this number, uh, let's say we change it to black, it updates across all of these uh, instances. So if I wanted to make the font really small, that trickles down to all of the instances from this master component. Um, so let's see, next what I did is kind of having a little bit of fun with this by ch changing the uh, uh, the outline stroke color uh, via overrides. So we'll go with, uh, let's see, this color for those. And this purple color for these. And normally I try to stay away from adding too much color within a design, uh, especially one like this, but uh, just decided to have a little bit of extra fun with this layout. Uh, because this is really just for personal use. So we'll use this blue on this one, darker blue. And again, this is done uh, through overrides. And let's see, this darker, kind of yellow, orangish. Uh, and I want just these because I want number bucket number one and bucket number 30 to be uh, the same black. So they kind of connect together. And then this last one will be, uh, let's see, uh, maybe this blue. Yeah, that's fine. Not exactly like my original design, but that's fine. Uh, so next, what I want to do is create these uh, connecting lines going between all of these buckets. And so what I'll do is with my line tool, I'll draw a line across here and then give it the same kind of darker gray like that. Give it a stroke weight of two pixels and then send it back behind those bucket layers and then center it vertically to those bu buckets. And then duplicate that, duplicate like so. Okay, those are evenly spaced. Uh, and then lastly, we want to create, I want to create this line that goes from the last uh, weekly buck, bucket from the this row and connects to the first bucket from the second row. So let me try to remember how I did this. Um, let's see, we'll do a So I'll center that and I'll go and edit this line and add, let's see, it doesn't have to be exact at the moment. Oh, looks like I went just a little, a little too far there. I'll place it right there so I have a clear guide. So like this. Okay, so there's my line, make it two pixels, make it this gray. And now what I can do is drag it into right about there, centered between both rows, send it to the back. Okay, so now that's connecting the five to the six and it looks like I have some rounded corners here uh, with a radius of 10 pixels. So I'll select this line, give it a 10 pixel radius. So that rounds it off right here and right here. Then select that line, drag it down to duplicate it to here, and then duplicate it a few, few more times. And now if I hide my layout grids and go into outline view, I can kind of see how I have all the vector shapes that are creating this layout. 
Uh, everything looks pretty good and evenly spaced. And I believe this this looks very close to my original design. And I have my component here, which I can use uh, to control all of these bucket instances. So for example, if I wanted to uh, increase the stroke weight on all of those buckets. I can do that right out of my component master. If I wanted to turn them to hard squares, I uh, just give it a bevel of zero. Like that. If I wanted to make them all circles, I would just give it um, an edge bevel, a corner radius of something really high, like 500 right there. It changes all them to, to circles. So Figma with the component fun functionality just allows you to work much faster in this way. Uh, set that back to 14. And uh, okay, so now for the final step, what I want to do is create this into a PDF so that I can print it out and hang it on my wall so I have it as a, a guide that I can follow. So with the frame, the progress tracker frame selected, I'll hit the plus on the export here, select PDF for my file format. Uh, we can take a look at the preview. So we got that frame here with everything in it. Looks good. Hit export progress tracker. And let's see. Uh, I'll just drop that on my desktop for simplicity. Okay, so Figma just saved out that PDF. Let's take a look here really quick. Desktop progress tracker. And if we check on it in Adobe Acrobat, voila, we have the exact same design uh, in the PDF. Now all I need to do is send it away to my printer. Uh, actually, I just noticed one little detail. Uh, these numbers were using, let's see, okay, they had a transparency of 50. So what I can do, again, instead of me trying to correct this for every single one of these buckets, I just select that element within the master component and give it an opacity of 50, and that updates it across uh, all of these instances that quickly. And... See, so let me show you. So once I get this printed, here's my tracker right here. I've already completed four videos for my Figma Friday series. So that's one of the things that you can do with Figma. I know it's uh, generally used for um, designing uh, mobile apps and websites, but I actually tend to use it a lot for a lot of my print work as well and different side projects like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found uh, some value out of it. If you did, please give the video a th thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything I did here or future Figma topics that you'd like to see covered, please leave that as a comment for me uh, down in the video. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.